Welcome to the Arctic, Antarctica, and Tundra. The tundra covers one-fifth of the world's surface and expands from Greenland, Alaska, Canada, and northern Russia. While in the Arctic and Antarctic, it consists of ice-covered land, which includes northern parts of Alaska and Norway. There are two seasons, winter and summer. The summers are very short and the winters are very long. When it is summer, the sun is up for almost 24 hours a day, but it only heats up the tundra area from 3 to 12 degrees Celsius. In contrast to winter, where the opposite light conditions occur, the temperature may drop from negative 28 to negative 70 degrees Celsius. Little precipitation occurs, but there are very strong winds. When traveling here, you must bring thick clothes for heavy winters. We recommend our tourists to bring long pants, long sleeve shirts, and very thick jackets and sweaters. Not having the proper clothes for this type of cold environment may lead to acute hypothermia, a rapid lowering of the body's core temperature, and frostbites which may occur in areas of extreme cold. Some recreational activities are boating and fishing in the North Pole. Or some go to the, see the second largest glacier in Norway, and also many people by boat may go and see the humpback whale in the glacier bay. One of the tourist's favorite activities is dog mushing in the snow, especially during the winter time. Also, amazing aurora viewing. Some animals leave Antarctica between June and August, its coldest months. Birds have both waterproof feathers and downy feathers to keep them warm. Many of the fish and insects have special chemicals in their blood that keep them from freezing. Some, like the whales, seals, and birds, have a layer of fat to insulate and protect them from the cold. Some animals remain in Antarctica all the time, for example the emperor penguins. Penguins and seals have a compact body shape and thick skin to help keep in their body heat. Polar bears are our major concern in the Arctic region. These animals are becoming endangered due to overhunting and climate change. These little creatures eat small vegetation in the tundra area, but as they tend to overgraze in these areas, the vegetation produces a poisonous chemical. Symbiotic relationships in the tundra. Mutualism. A relationship where both organisms benefit each other. For example, lichens. They are made up of fungus and green alga. Alga is photosynthetic in nature and reduces carbon dioxide into sugars that feed fungus. Parasitism is a relationship between two organisms where one organism benefits whereas the other one is at loss in the relation. For example, the liver tapeworm cyst stays and grows in the body of many animals such as moose, caribou, and wolves. The tapeworms feed off of the food that is eaten by these animals and causes malnutrition to the host's body. Commensalism. The climate is very harsh in the tundra, so it's not a friendly environment for vegetation growth. Animals in this region are very limited to sources of food. Some animals dig holes in the ground snow in a quest to find food. It digs up the soil and slightly exposes, or at least brings closer to the surface, some of the subnivian mammals. Despite the weather conditions, there are still many plants that can survive. Because of climate change, bacteria intrudes and melts, causing decomposing of plants that has built up for many years and release carbon dioxide in the air, along with other gases that warm the planet. Current efforts to protect our biome are, for example, an organization called the World Wide Life, which helps endangered animals like seals and polar bears. There are big corporations wanting to build industries here. If we let them interfere with our environment, then there will be more pollution and our animals will become extinct faster. 